You hear that? That's the awkward silence of a family dinner after you just got caught vaping. Most vapes contain high levels of nicotine and disappointment. <sighs> Brought to you by The Real Cost and the FDA. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown up? Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel website and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner can just be french fries. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listener, John here. This year, Gen X Grown Up attended the Southern Fried Gaming Expo 2022 that was held July 15th through the 17th in Atlanta, Georgia. And while there, we were asked to give a couple of discussion panels. One of them was run by George, and I've got George here. Hey, how's it going, man? Hey, how's it going, guys? So we recorded the first panel that we did, the one Friday evening that you coordinated. So you want to real quickly tell everybody what they're about to hear. Absolutely. So for a number of years, almost since the beginning of our YouTube channel, we have been extremely interested in these different replicate arcade machines that have come back from our nostalgic youth. So you've seen them in Walmart and you've seen them at different mm -hmm. places from the small little arcade machines all the way up to the super highly detailed and arcade one up three quarter cabinet type of stuff sure. out there. Yeah. And I've been very interested in how that marketplace has formed and how it sits right now and what its future might be. So we decided mm -hmm. that we would have a discussion panel to talk amongst ourselves after doing a whole ton of research and also talk with the SFGE attendees and allow them to throw their right. two cents in. Yeah, we had a really good crowd of enthusiastic people, asked a lot of questions, and we had a good time. So, uh, George, you coordinated this one, so why don't you kick it off. This is the Gen X Grown Up Mini Arcade Commerce Panel from SFGE 2022. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Gen X Grown Up. This is our panel. Modern day retro arcade machines, are they worth the money? I'm assuming that you know that. That's why you're here. Either that or you wandered in looking for the bathroom. In any case, we're happy that you're here. Mm -hmm. um, I am George. This is John. Hello. John is our CEO and started both our YouTube channel and our podcast. Mm -hmm. On the end there is Mo. Hey. Mo handles everything that I don't, which is pretty much everything because I don't really do anything. As you can see on the table in front of us, we have definitely delved into the retro arcade mini collector market. We've been doing this now for, I don't know, two years, I think, from the time we produced the first Walmart video. Uh, almost four. Four, four years. years. Almost yeah, four it's years. Been a while. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm old. Since they first dropped these little micro, these basic funds yeah. in my arcades, they started mm -hmm. showing up in Walmarts, which was kind of the proliferation explosion began from there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And for those of you who love video games, and I'm assuming that you do since you're at this convention, mm -hmm. uh, you've seen the market increase from these basic fun mm -hmm. in my arcades all the way up to the arcade one-ups and the super detailed replicates and numbskull cabinets that are coming out now. What we would like to do today is just ask a couple of questions about the marketplace and get your thoughts and tell you our thoughts on how we see this evolution of something that's really tied into our childhood growing up, right? So the 80s arcade era. And the first question that I think should be on everybody's mind, mm -hmm. is this just a toy? Yeah, right. I mean, initially they were. I mean, you know, we talk about the founding of Gen X Grown Up came around. We saw younger people doing content talking about retro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, wait a minute, that's just our stuff. I mean, it wasn't retro when we used it. it was, they, they just named it that because they had never saw it before. Uh, but even back then, you had like the uh, like the Coleco put out their line. They had the Donkey Kong, the Pac-Man, yeah. and the Frogger, and the Miss Pac-Man. It was pretty great. A Zaxxon, if you could find Those it. Those were all the LCD. They were. I mean, yeah. for the time, it was they touted it's the arcade experience in your house. and But they were really toys. I mean, at that time, frankly... Video games were toys. They weren't considered, you know, a mainstream form of artistic expression and stuff. And so the early tabletop kind of arcade toys were just that. They were toys because they were aimed at kids. And 
just because they were a limited run, they, they've increased in value. So that kind of was a, a, almost a nucleus for this panel to talk about the fact, well, well, hell, the Coleco ones that came out in the 80s, those are highly collectible and valuable. Sure. How might that pan well, out today for these? And I, I don't disagree with you that mm-hmm. they were just toys, but I do want to point out that when I was 12 years old, mm-hmm. it was more than just a toy. Oh, because that was, was my really, first yeah. opportunity yeah. to yeah. bring the arcade home. <laughs> and we've talked about it on our podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, my friends and I, we had probably five or six of them between us. Mm-hmm. And we found this like little wooded area behind <laughs> our houses. And we put them all up on stumps and everything. And we charged kids a quarter every time they wanted to play. <laughs> we made our own little arcade in the woods, uh, you know, being little Try devilish Offset expenses. That's right. right. <laughs> and. Everybody that came to the our little wooded woodland arcade mm-hmm. enjoyed themselves, had a good time, just like when they would go to the mall with their parents. Yeah. And you would think, I mean, we had the Coleco ones, and then there were other tabletop toy kind of things. I mean, Tamagotchi came around, but it was more kind of handheld, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, Game & Watch was another uh, attempt to bring kind of arcade games. They were wildly reimagined, but yeah. those are something <laughs> that have held, exceeded holding their value, quite honestly. A sealed one of those. Liquid crystal display ones, right? They were LCD yeah. stuff, yeah. sure. And then later they had a color version, but there's a huge market value in having that arcade experience in your hand that's proven itself, certainly from the 80s and 90s, but here's these modern things that flooded where we at now. Yeah, but that's the question: though. Was it the arcade experience? So Which really, <laughs> I think it depended on your age at the time, right? So <laughs> between the three of us, I'm the baby. Mo is the grandfather, the elder statesman. So <laughs> <laughs> I would say that me being like 12 or so, it was a little bit easier to consider it an arcade experience because I was younger and my imagination mm-hmm. was a little bit different, yeah. wasn't as developed. But maybe you being 16. Yeah. I think around that time same. period, mm-hmm. it would have felt completely yeah. different, right? It, it, to me, it was more of a, I don't know call it. It was like something that hold me over until I could get to the real <laughs> so you go back to the arcade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. It's something I could do at home, something I could do with friends. But, you know, really, we were searching the couch recorders and stuff like that because yep. that's really what we wanted to do, right? That's what we wanted to get to the arcade. I know I never considered them to be any kind of equipment. I just thought they were just an alternative entertainment piece, mm-hmm. really, when we get right down to it. Well, and so now we're talking about the modern reincarnation of that market, right? Because that's yeah. you know, 30, yeah. 40 years. Right. Now we're talking about the modern reincarnation. We've got a plethora of different form factors and companies mm-hmm. up here. And so I guess there's a comparison that I would like to ask, and that's what's the difference between, like, say, a small impulse buy, mm-hmm. like the world's smallest versions, Versus an arcade one-up or a numbskull cabinet that are hundreds of dollars. Yeah. How do you see the differences there, Mo? Well, I think when these first came out, especially some of these smaller ones, mm-hmm. I think they were – honestly, I think some of these were meant to be shelf candy. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. they look awesome. They put them on your shelf. You know, when it looks at ooh. But you start play them, it is nothing at all. Like what you imagine – or, right. you know, there's yeah. no resemblance to the actual game. The first round especially. Oh, the yeah, early absolutely. round of those, they were actually They were black closer and white. to the old Coleco. Oh, yes. they were super oh, yeah. like the Coleco. Yeah. And quite honestly, I was okay with that in a way because mm-hmm. I didn't really – it didn't pretend – although actually some of them did say, oh, play like your K. But I really got them because especially like Qbert. You know, I bought an incarnation of Qbert that's out there. They were just, oh, you play them once. Like, okay, this is horrible. Put it on my shelf. It looks great. Right. But I think as they've got more and more popular, I think the demand was that people wanted that real – arcade experience, right? You didn't want something that was just shelf candy anymore, especially for the prices and stuff of these things. You know, I feel like the the My Arcade units that we have a couple of here and these little basic fun units that were from Walmart predominantly, they almost were, unintentionally, they were testing the market to go, is there an interest in these things? And ultimately, yeah, people were snapping them up. And I mean, we did, I can't tell you how many reviews, every new one that came out, we had a video review, it got great traffic on it because people were interested in these. And it wasn't so much how like the arcade is it, they wanted to know what's the case like, you know, what version of is it on there, which in many cases, it's not even arcade at all. It's an NES ROM, a vast majority of these, or a knockoff of the NES ROM even. And I think when companies like Replicade and New Wave said, Whoa, no. People are out there. The first, they're analyzing it. It's not just kids buying them and going, we, I'm playing Frogger. It's <laughs> collectors that are going like, well, look, I have this thing. How close is it? Let's analyze. And, and, and bigger people said, well, hey, we could, we could fill that market that's actually a collectible. So you're saying that my arcade and basic fun, they were essentially market testing for new wave toys yeah. and numbskulls. I'm sure that wasn't their intent, but I think that's what well, happened. I yeah. think it came out as novelties. <laughs> Yeah, I think originally right. they were novelties. Yeah. And so that's why those plus the world's smallest and some of the other mm-hmm. smaller devices we have up here, 
I, I can see them as just impulse buys. Yep. But when you get into a new wave toy, less so. That's something oh. that you have to think about <laughs> yeah. because there's an investment cost there yeah. that's not with. I mean, these. You know, we'll get into the prices and everything later, but you're talking under forty bucks when you're looking at these things at Walmart. Most, right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas Majority, the other like ones 20, are hundreds of twenty five. These you get for ten or fifteen, right there. Yeah, mm-hmm. they really are. You know, an impulse thing. You know, it's like, well, I'm already buying chicken and a mop and some pliers. Let's buy another twenty dollar toy. Because so I'm now that well, you, it's one of us, yeah. yeah. Now that we've been in the marketplace for four years, yeah. Do you have a preference? Like. Well, Comes down to a dollar, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm at the point now where it's like, I do want the real game experience for pretty much anything I buy. Okay. You know, and if it doesn't have it. Now, again, like a lot of your reviews that you do of these things, I mean, the things you hit on, you know, how is it playable? How is the sound? Mm-hmm. You know, how does it look? You know, how does it feel? Is the controller to work the same? You know, and I think that's, for me personally, that's kind of what I'm looking for more now than mm-hmm. some of these other kind of smaller sort of. Again, just one off. Well, you know, in those reviews, I'm not even talking about uh, necessarily is it absolutely accurate. It's how close does it get you? I, no one yeah. expects necessarily. Well, we have been taught now <laughs> that for the $20 price point, we're not going to get the genuine arcade ROM. Right. We're not going to get a quality controller. We're not going to get all the things we're hoping for. How close are you getting for that 20 or 25 bucks? And that's exactly what, you know, so what are you, what's your preference? The preference is give me as close as you can get to arcade and tell me what that costs and let me evaluate if it's worth it to me. Well, Mo mentioned something that kind of brings into the next question, mm-hmm. the next part of the mm-hmm. topic, playability, yeah. right? So my fingers are, are fat yep. <laughs> and been we're, broken we're, many a time. We're old sausage finger life. guys now, right? <laughs> the little yeah. world's smallest things, believe it or not, I can actually play them, which is surprising. <laughs> but is it real playability? Compare that to a new wave toy or a numbskull and then all the way to the arcade one-ups with the different versions. You got the countercades and the, the party cades mm-hmm. and then the three quarters. Right. Uh, what about the playability across the lines? Yeah. Well, what do you find on playability? I mean, it, it varies, of course. It, yeah, it varies. I mean, some of them, most of them like, say that they do use the original ROMs, I think, in most cases for some of these higher end ones. The higher end ones, for sure. For yep. sure. Yep. You know, and those play well. Then it comes down to things like how easy to see, you know, and the mm-hmm. problem is that some of these are so light that, you know, using one hand to hold it and you're trying to play with the other hand, it just doesn't really work mm-hmm. very well. Right. But then you get to some of these guys here, like, I mean, this one is awesome to play. You know, mm-hmm. to me, it plays very well. It's nice and stable. So... I mean, I think you get a wide variety. I mean, I've gotten, we've seen some of the more expensive ones or more pricey ones that really just are crappy. Well, on that playability front, I mean, I think it really comes down to what kind of play do you want. Okay. Uh, you know, when I pick up a, a credit card size toy, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, expecting. I'm, I'm not going like, all right. Time to play some Cubert. You know, instead you're like, oh, I remember Cubert. This is reminiscent of that. That's fun. But you're probably not going for your world's high score because, first of all, who cares on that? Right? That's not really a high score because it's not the genuine article. And so when I when I pick up those toys, I think most people aren't looking at it as uh, I'm back at the arcade. It's like, like you said, it's a placeholder. I'm not at the arcade yet, but I remember that thing and it's mm-hmm. nice, and maybe I'm gonna collect them and show them on my shelf. Uh, I would, I would, and I think it's gonna be proven out a bit later. We, we hear George, I think you're going to find that those ones that aren't considered very playable are the ones that probably don't have a collectability in terms of value that mm-hmm. they hold so well. The closer you get to good playability, the more valuable they are in the long run, even over time increasing. Sure. Yeah. And then there's rarity and mm-hmm. of course, yeah, 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 things yeah. that we'll yeah. talk about. Was it to get? Is it a right. weird one? Yeah. Um, you mentioned it earlier too, when you were talking about the mm-hmm. basic fun and the my arcades and on up the, price ladder so to speak the version of the game that's on the device the arcade rom versus the nes rom now so i'm going to ask the audience something real quick and then we'll get yeah, yeah. It. then i can rant that's fine because so, yeah, i know where it's going does anybody out there actually own any version of any of these new retro style arcade games all the way from the little credit card things all the way up to the arcade one up Marcus, yep, one, yep, Marcus. One, one and a maybe. He's one on pre-order. Maybe, not sure. <laughs> Somebody else owns He's it. Or? To come in. <laughs> Probably doesn't count, but I have would have peaked with someone. I would like a port to a PS5 count. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, yeah, so, yeah unless you, you downloaded, so you didn't you have a cabinet per se, but you have the game. That's correct. Sure. So yeah, in yeah. my second, my follow up question for the audience is: How many people actually would want to own a device like this? Whether it's the Ten or fifteen dollar version, all the way up to the hundreds of dollars. Anybody? 
One, two, yeah, three. A couple here, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. okay. Your hands won't get cut off if you put them on. <laughs> <laughs> he wants two. Uh, so these are all for sale. No, I'm just kidding. It's um, <laughs> fingers, are we? Get out all of them, please. Ten. <laughs> so let's get into the different ROM debate now because the reason why I wanted to ask that is because yeah. depending upon which one of these things you, A, can afford, mm -hmm. and B, think looks nice, when you get it home, you might be pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. or horribly disappointed based on the ROM that's on the machine. Yeah. I know what you're going to rant about. Yeah, so go I'm, ahead. I'm going to give go you ahead. a lead in here. Go ahead. So, so, tee me up. <laughs> so one of the reviews you did actually was that you realized that one of the games played slower, right? And Ooh, the sound was right. awful. And yeah. that ruined the experience for you, didn't it? Mm, seven videos worth of ruining the experience. <laughs> yes. That was a series. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, I mean, get, that was my thing, get rants away. It, it was that very one on the chair down at the end, the yeah. yellow one, yeah. It was, yeah. It was that so one. Yeah, so I want John to yeah. talk a little bit yeah. about that story in those videos <laughs> because the game that he's talking about, we, all three of us up here have a game that's our game. And I'm assuming everybody in the audience does as well. You, If you're here, there's probably an arcade game from your youth or your past. You, that, that you was see the 15 game games, you you're play. like, you see yours, and you're like, right. oh, beeline, you know. So, <laughs> Moe's was obviously Cubert. Yep. That's yep. what he's talked about. John? Donkey Kong. Right. Yep. And mine was Galaga. Yep. So the story comes around my game <laughs> yeah, with John Owens. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, first off, you look at any of these, and you're like, what does it say on the back? Classic arcade gameplay. <laughs> Sunday. Uh, oh, Sunday, yeah? Sunday. Really? Is it? <laughs> if you're going to art, you're going to call it my arcade, and you're going to call it an arcade classic, and then you're going to give me an NES ROM. It makes my teeth itch because it, it, why, why didn't you call it NES port in a box? Why do you call it that? Now, I, I cooled on that a bit over time because I'm like, oh, now I understand what they're doing. What they have is this super inexpensive NES on a chip, and they have licenses from Namco and Taito and small non-Nintendos out there that they right. can get access to. And the, the port's already written, and the chip is inexpensive. You cost them like 20 cents to put it in there, and the rest is manufacturing. And so I cooled on that a bit, but yeah, the arcade one up, that thing especially, they have the genuine ROM in it, just like mm -hmm. all the replicates, just like all of the quarter arcades from Numskull. But they had guts in it on a printed circuit board that could not keep up with a 40 year old game emulated <laughs> in MAME. Yeah. Uh, which they're using a version of MAME on that thing. And uh, it felt weird. It sounded weird. As soon as I heard it, I even called you and I'm like, it's the ROM, but it sounds weird. And you're like, I can't hear it on the phone. But I'm like, wait, I'll send you the video. You'll yeah. see. You'll, you'll see. <laughs> and, and after the first one, you get these emails like, you're just being too nitpicky. You're, but ultimately, we found that it's not enough just to give me the ROM. There's an experience that we're looking for, as especially as Gen X collectors ourselves who lived in the arcade the first time around. We're not just looking for, here's a picture that looks like Galaga or Pac-Man or whatever. Sure. There's an experience there. And when you start messing with it, the audio is choppy. You know, it, it's, it, yeah, it, it, it yielded. People would say, well, it's not compared to a real arcade machine. I'm like, I drove across town to a real arcade machine <laughs> yeah. and said, look, the damn thing is slow. We finally got them to acknowledge it wasn't right. And after, again, after a seven video series, we ultimately, that's working properly, but well, and yeah. so from my side of it, being yeah. Galaga was my game. Yeah. As soon as he sent me the video, like we were on the phone and I'm watching the video, I'm like, okay, that's bullshit. That's wrong right away. Yeah. Right yeah. away. Yeah. That's yeah. awful. It's not I just mean, me, it was right? terrible. Like I, if there's a game that you know that you played hours and hours and hours in an arcade, there's just a sense that you get. You may not be able to articulate it, but you know exactly when that bleep is supposed to happen or when that character mm -hmm. is supposed to move this direction on a Or a something is off pitch. Yeah. Or like some things I've you looked at. You can hear yeah. the little breaks in sound, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And every bit of that on that particular machine, I heard like there was nothing that was right. Now, the other games on that cabinet seemed to be okay. They, they, so they had a performance issue, but it was not as pronounced. Right. Yeah, it, they were slower, but they were less demanding games. And yeah. I think part of it for me, and we're going to get into it here in the next question, the next um, subject, was how much you're spending on this. If I'm spending $15 <laughs> on the world's smallest, mm -hmm. and you give me something that doesn't sound quite right, I, what am I going to complain you go, about? It's eh, $15 keychain. Sure is thing, cute, right? is what you'll say. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's not quite right, but 15 If bucks. I spend 20 or $30 on one of these basic fun My Arcade things, I'm going to say like Mo did. Well, it's okay, yeah. but I'll just put it up on my shelf and it'll look nice. Yeah. But when I'm spending the kind of money I'm spending on Arcade 1-Up, who purports to mm -hmm. be, we're going to put this arcade experience in your house... 
Yeah. And you're going to charge me all this kind of crazy money, and I've even got to build the damn thing? That was their first party, <laughs> Kate. It was, it was $199. I mean, it was like, the first one we'd was seen. Was there never yeah. a play tester at the facility that said, that sounds awful? Well, I think it's more than that. It was a play tester who actually probably played the game. You know, I think sure. that was the issue. Yeah, I, I even <laughs> said at one point in the video, I think I said, one of two things happened here. Either they don't have someone that knows the difference testing it to see if it's right. That's bad. Mm -hmm. Or they do have that person and they decided, let's go ahead and release it. We don't care. And neither of those are great news if you are a collector that actually cares about the integrity of the game. Right. And I think it was it was kind of interesting because we're not a huge, big, you know, like uh, – What's his name? PewDiePie type of YouTube channel. <laughs> Almost. Oh, okay. We're like, like half a percent close. Half a percent. <laughs> okay. But I did find it interesting that with all of the talking that you did back and forth with Arcade One Up, where you had to call their customer service mm -hmm. and talk with them on the phone and even sent them links to the video so that they could look at it, I was very surprised that they went through a redesign process mm -hmm. and ended up with a new motherboard chipset. Yeah. That they eventually sent to That's you, right. like you yeah. said. Yep. And even though the first time you put the old motherboard back in the machine accidentally. It was, instead was of my bad, <laughs> right. <but> still, <laughs> spoiler <laughs> alert, I'm fallible. <laughs> but and I, was, I don't mind publishing to the world how fallible I am. Right? As, as irritated as I was at what they put out the first time, mm -hmm. I was pleasantly surprised that a company mm -hmm. the size of Arcade 1UP listened to a person who owned their machine and did something to fix it. Yeah. The encouraging part of that is it, it has nothing to do with like, ooh, Gen X grown up covered it. It was like, oh, right. 30,000 people are watching that video this week. Perhaps we should t take a look at what's yeah. going on with this cabinet. <laughs> I'm hearing that you don't mind if it's arcade ROM versus NES ROM at this point. It really maybe depends upon the form factor and price of the machine. And is that, what year you land? Yeah. I mean, and what I mean, expectation, what I want. Out okay. Of it, right. I mean, mm -hmm. like I said, um, when I buy some of these, I knew what I was getting. Right. You know? yeah. And so I got, I'm like, oh, okay, it's a crappy version. That's fine. You know, I put it up on the shelf. But then, like I said, when I got these guys, you know, I, my expectation was this, you should play like, like the real game. Because that's what so, they tell me it's going to yeah. be. And that's what I was looking for. Yeah. I, I, I think that probably something I said sparked that question where I said, I don't care so much. I've accepted it now. Mm hmm. You know, these smaller units, these $20, $25 units are off the market, the primary market now. You're not finding them in stores anymore right. unless they're, they're old stock or they're laying around. And um, I, th I think the pandemic had a lot to do with that, the access to electronic components and the supply chain, and that's, that's slowed down. But I also hope and hope, I wonder, like, this market's not dead. Clearly, there's still people buying stuff. If I am a basic fund or if I am the My Arcade manufacturers, I'm looking at what the bigger guys are doing. I'm like, oh, people actually want the, the right thing. So if they put a next wave coming out in the next year or two, they need to start having real ROMs because they did it with Space Invaders. Mm -hmm. They did it with Street Fighter as a test. Right. And then the market kind of dried up for the pandemic. The next wave of the bargain ones that are kind of, okay, there's a toy plastic shell needs to be arcade ROMs at this point. They need to stop doing goofy ports. And okay. I'll probably be very disappointed if the next wave from these guys, the smaller guys, aren't the right thing. So I want to get to this last part okay. of this yep. subject. So this whole overarching subject is, is this just a toy? When we were kids, when you got a toy, mm -hmm. first thing you did was take it out of the box, start yep. playing with it, sure. <laughs> right? Yep. We're adults now, supposedly. Well, yeah. ish. Sure. Okay, ish. Yeah. Yeah. Now, though, when you buy one of these things, do you take it out of the box? Do you leave it in the box? Do you want to play with it? Do you take care of the box? Mm -hmm. Do you buy two of them like I used to do with comic <laughs> books where you leave one in the bag and board and the other one you read? <laughs> right. What do you do now? I have not bought any of these investments yet. Okay. Actually, I, I, I stand corrected. I did buy this one. I bought two of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I admit I bought two of them. But that was more because it's your game. Right. Well, also there were two styles. There were two styles. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I got the one that was the exclusive one, yeah, and that you, one right. is still in its box. I put it away. That was the um, Warren Davis edition that got autographed. I autographed awesome, and everything right? else. Yeah. And then I, but I really liked playing on it, so I bought another one. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I'm not looking at them as investments, although there have been several times where I kick myself i was like i should have bought should've five bought of these things one. you know i should have okay. bought a couple more because i look on ebay i'm like it, it actually confounds me sometimes i'm like yeah and we're gonna we've got that <laughs> in the next <laughs> yeah, yeah, section yeah, yeah it's coming yeah. yeah yeah i i take toys out of the box i absolutely yeah. do i i almost never buy anything just as a collect i buy them as investments in our content creation 
but right. not as in financial investments in terms of, of flipping it necessarily. That being said, I'm careful to open things. I don't rip it open. I exacto it open. And I put it back in the box. I mean, all these have been open that you see. And in fact, all of these have been featured in videos on our channel at some point in the past. Mm -hmm. But I put, I put them back in the box when I'm done because I always think, well, maybe one day they'll be worth something. I don't want to be the guy that just threw it away and ripped it into the box. But yeah, I, I open them. I, I open everything, I think. I've never not opened one. I do the same thing. The The only thing that I think I'm doing differently now than when I was 12 is <laughs> now I take care of that box. I put it in a closet yeah. and I make sure that you know it's not crushed by other things mm -hmm. so that that way later on when I want to pass these things along to my children or if I do want to resell them on the secondary market like we're about to talk about mm -hmm. I have the full thing because you see it on Pawn Stars all the time what do they say <laughs> when a toy comes in oh the box oh, condition is everything well the right? box itself would be worth yeah. something right, <laughs> right? <laughs> well I was just curious about that and that's a good way to end that segment you're listening to Gen X Grown Up but if you have a friend who's not yet listening why not tell them about us they'll thank you later Hey there! Are you interested in building your brand, whether it's personal, startup, or corporate, and developing your leadership skills? On Mentor Dialogue, come join me, Mentor Dial, as I interview some of the world's most interesting personalities, entrepreneurs, business people, and authors. I'm proud that this podcast, which is available through all your favorite podcast services, is part of the Evergreen Podcast Network. Check out the Mentor Dialogue show on leadership, transformation, and brand strategy, where you'll get stimulating conversations that elevate your energy and spark change. As we do, I'm just kind of curious, now that we've talked about all that, what do you guys think? Do you guys see these more as toys, or do you see them more as reliving your arcade childhood? Uh, to me, they kind of strike me as kind of like the fun pop vinyl. Mm. Off our okay. Mm -hmm. When I look at this, I'm like, I want to play like the yeah. actual. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Just like you. But it begs the question like these, I want them to look exactly right. I'll put them on the shelf. That's fine. I don't actually expect them to play well. Mm -hmm. It's way too small. It's too mm -hmm. easy. I'm not going to hold a whole cabinet. Like yeah. <laughs> this, like, would you be better off buying a main cabinet that size that can play everything? Have all the buttons. Mm -hmm. to have a Pac-Man one, a Galaga one, a one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, and there's, well, and there's some stuff too with that. Especially Arcade One Up is notorious for this. You get a Galaga, right? And you get a Pac-Man, but they've got the same games on both. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've got yeah. you've got four or five games that are shared yeah. between them, so you're really only yeah, buying maybe, maybe one, one or two, or two new games, different. right? Yeah, yeah, and you're getting yeah. a different form factor. Are you stuck with them? Is there anyone that sells a main cabinet that you can put everything on? You well, can. certainly people do. Yeah. They absolutely do. I and mean, you can take these yeah. and convert these. Yeah. You can get a yeah. Raspberry Pi device. Yeah. You can put it in one of these right here and run RetroPie on that, and you can you can Whoever, hook up the cables right. and you can play on that main arcade yeah. now. The buttons in the controllers might limit you as to what games yeah. you can play because you're not going to play Street Fighter on this with only one button. Yeah, and we get a lot of questions on our videos about that. You're like, "Hey, yeah. can you mod this?" And I'm like, "Yeah," but I'm not reviewing the modability. I'm reviewing the product. Right. You could take anything and turn it into anything if you have enough, you know, know how and effort and time. We're really just evaluating what's that product and its future value. You know, here any one of these could be turned into whatever you want. All right. Well, you mentioned the word value. Uh -oh. so it's time okay. to get into the prices now. So I'm going to run through a little bit of a list, and we can talk about them individually. Okay. Yep. At yep. first, I'm just going to talk about the original manufacturer's retail price, what you could find them for in the store, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Then let's get into the secondary resale market, mm -hmm. the Ebays and things of that nature, Amazons. So first off are the micro tiny arcades. Yep. So that's yep. the little credit cards and these little guys. Those generally run anywhere between ten and thirty dollars. Now, like John said, they're very difficult to find in retail outlets now because when the pandemic happened, everybody just, you know, manufacturing went to crap and these companies just kind of fell by the wayside. But ten to thirty dollars, depending upon which one it is, mm. yeah. that that feels okay to me. What about you guys? It seems a little steep, I think, sometimes for some okay. of them. But I bought them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it depends I mean, on the which because, one, like, right? especially these. These are like they make a whole series. 
I mean, they, they look really good. I mean, they look like little tiny mm-hmm. cabinets. Sure. And yep. some of them are different. You know? Like, there's a pole position one that yeah. actually has the little steering wheel instead of a yep. joystick. Yeah. But it just moves like a joystick <laughs> left <laughs> and right. But it's got that form factor. But, yeah, but it's cute. Yeah. 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 And like I said, they're 10 to $30. They were $30 brand new. But I find them all the time sure. in Cracker Barrel yeah. for half price. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Th- those are. These are still on the market. They're not making yeah. new ones. Right. But they, they put out so many that you still can find them easily yep. anywhere right now. Yeah. So... My arcade and basic fun, these types, not this yeah. one or the Street Fighter, mm-hmm. yep. but these types right here. Uh, well, I guess the Street Fighter ones, too. They range anywhere from $20 when they first came out to $50, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. So yep. depending upon when you bought it and which one you bought, did that feel reasonable to you? Oh, it depends. Like, both of these are basic fun, these two cubes. Yep. Yep. Right. One actually has like the real game on it, and the, the other one has this weird... LCD right. with like the sc- mm-hmm. with cubes right. etched on the screen actually, so that you're actually moving this little blip around, like the old Coleco. Yeah, stuff. yeah you're back and they were about that, the yeah. same price. Yeah, so that one, so that one actually kind of bugged me a little bit because <laughs> I'm like, if I'm gonna pay that, he's like, what? How are know, those equivalents? Yeah, how yeah. Are those even remotely the same? Yeah. So for that one, I thought it was a little bit too for the mm-hmm. non-real one. I thought that was a little steep. Yeah. And all, all these basic funds, they retailed for nineteen ninety nine when they were new. Yeah, right. was the main my arcades, it's actually the fortieth anniversary room, but they were twenty five bucks. Um, now when you got into the Space Invader and the Street Fighter, those, though, that's right. the ones that and went up guys, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Those, that was like yeah. only forty five and fifty, which tells me like that's the price point and that's the quality that I'm expecting in a future wave, is what we was kind of talking about. Now there the, was another difference. These on at forty five well. or fifty, no. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> but the, yeah, the premium but ones. But there's a difference. So yeah. the basic fun, the arcade classics, yep. they all had the same cabinet. That's right. With a different sticker or paint job, but they all had the same cabinet. Mm -hmm. What I was impressed with right before the pandemic when they did the Street Fighter one and when they did the Space Invaders one, they had custom cabinets for each Mm -hmm. one. You can tell they're not the same molds or anything like that. Uh, The Space Invaders, if you hook up an external speaker to it, has the exact thumping Space Invader Mm -hmm. sound that you remember from when you would play it in Pizza Inn or Pizza Hut when you were a kid. Uh, The Street Fighter game actually... Even had the flaw that somebody talked about, right? The red, white, blue buttons or something. Well, it had that. You're, you're bearing the lead on the Space Invaders, which okay. is, which is that it has the reflective oh, moonscape, right. which is the big yes. deal on that. It's it's so deep because they replicated the way that Space Invaders was projected up onto a monitor, reflected back on you, and it has depth and kind of a parallax That's effect true. when you look yeah. at it. Yeah, they, they just That's beautiful. One, they man. paid way more respect to the games on these premium tier ones. So fifty bucks is good for those. I thought. Yep. Yeah, twenty bucks was good for these for what they. They were, but anything above that, and you're, yeah, you're getting I, into that top tier. I think to your point earlier, if they continue down this road, I will be a player in their market. Yeah, I bought me the too. Space Invader. Oh, yeah. I never did get the Street Fighter, but I, I always wanted to. But frankly, I was poised to buy a ton more of those, and then they dried up. These yeah. I only ever bought Galaga, <laughs> just because it's Galaga. It's Galaga yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. On the end down there, the Dragon's Lair that we have down there, do we have another one? I think that's the only one. Oh, and the Cubert. Oh, and the Cubert. Those are both new wave. So those are both new wave toys, which they call their line Replicate. You've heard us use those two terms. They're interchangeable. Mm -hmm. One's the company. The other one's the product line. These are the first really purposefully designed to be exactly Mm -hmm. like the arcade experience. One six. One six scale, is it? One six scale. scale. These range anywhere from 129 when they were first producing the very first ones, mm-hmm. like Tempest yeah. and Centipede, a, Centipede on, yeah. right? Um, all the way up to now, they're coming in at 159. Now yeah. you can also, if you've bought one or you've signed up for their newsletter, you can get a code whenever they do their first release that'll give you like 10 or 15 or 20 bucks off. <laughs> so you can get them for a little bit cheaper than when they come out for regular sale later on after the cabinets. Now, manufactured. I mean, look at this, George Bo. It's it's got a padlock on it for the <laughs> for the, the guy that owns the arcade. It comes with little tokens. It comes pull with the uh, pull the back of the dragon's layer out, Mo. Oh yeah, it has a tiny laser disc in it to yeah. celebrate the oh, fact yeah. that it was a laser yeah. disc game. This one. I this yeah, exactly. And not only did it come with the laser disc yeah. player in the cabinet. So there's the laser disc. <laughs> but inside the laser, the laser disc. laser disc sleeve, right? So that's the sleeve the for the original disc. But there's inside the, I yep. put the disc inside there. So there's your laser disc. For, they came with right? all of that. That's attention to detail. These are aimed at collectors. Right. These are aimed at people that are picky bastards like us. The little <laughs> coin doors even open accurate. on them. Yep. It's 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, it could be, and we've got plenty of videos on on that the subject. Layer, yeah. But these range, like I said, one twenty nine to one fifty nine. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what's your opinions on these prices? Now, I want to buffer that with something we were talking about right before we started the panel, and that's the production times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so factor that in and explain that a little bit when you're talking about whether you think the 129 to 159. Well, good, but well, you were kind of running that down before. Which yeah. You, yeah. So the Cubert one, they announced it, wow, it was what, 18 months ago? Or it was probably more than that, right? Probably 20 months. Yeah, um, promised like it in about nine, ten months. Took it almost two years mm -hmm. <laughs> to get it. I was I was still happy with it. <laughs> I mean, um, it was because, but you weren't happy until you got it. You're right. Yeah. But it kind of was one of the things that's so long the lead time. I kind of forgot that I even ordered it, and then I got an email saying it's on its way. I'm like, what's on? It its was way? a gift to your future <laughs> self, and money was gone. You yeah. forgot you spent it. I was like, what? Yeah. And I'm like, oh crap, I forgot about yeah. that. But this one, once it came in, I was extremely happy. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the level of detail. I mean, the side art is exactly the same. The gameplay is the same. Mm -hmm. You know, they do the thumping, the sound, mm -hmm. everything about it, and plus all the little extras they give you with these too. Like, I can hook up to to an HDMI monitor and play it. Mm -hmm. As big as I want you to, see it and on it big works. Screen, yeah. Yeah, um, I can, can hook a controller to it, yeah. so I could actually use a separate controller if exactly. I want to and play these things. And so I was very, very happy with this one. Like I said it was enough that I actually got a backup one. So right, they, so. you got the other variant, right? I right. got the other because I bought the yeah. original. They had a special variant uh, that came out before this, so I purchased that one because that's mm -hmm. this was my game. And you got lucky enough that you got, got an, an autograph one. from Warren Davis. So which that's now nice, in my yeah. closet, safely put away. <laughs> yeah, you know, so one of those things you wish you could go back to your younger self and be like, "Don't play with that." Right. Uh, but but then so I bought this one because I did want something that. Handy to have around. With a daily driver. Toy, daily driver. Toy, and plus, yeah. it, also, it looks great. It does. Now, I mean, yeah. they look um, like, as shelf candy goes, this is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and they do fit. They look beautiful on a yes. shelf. You're mm -hmm. right. John, yeah. you, I think, bought the first replicate out of the three of us. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I have the centipede that right. is going for gangbusters, which we'll talk about in a minute, I'm sure. But I mean, it's, I think these are priced perfectly. If I had infinite funds, I would just buy every single one of them. But <laughs> when you open the box, you see where that $150 went. You know, it's not like you open it and go 150 bucks for this. You know, you open it like, well, that was fair. All right. You know, you have, you have something that the the build quality, the what they include. The you know, you were commenting on the hey, our side art's right. The this is right. Mm -hmm. I expect that now. That's what they yeah. do. The only thing that surprises me anymore are the little extras. Like, oh, the laser disc, that's cute. Little mm -hmm. things yeah, like they that. Put a little padlock in back. Because that's what right. they give you is so accurate. I got the asteroids one, and on the asteroids one, like they know. That, I talked about. The I talked about Arcade 1-Up that was like, is anybody checking this that knows what the games are supposed to be? With Arcade 1-Up, they had an aftermarket, so the control deck would get worn out because kids would be dumping Dr. Pepper on it and stuff. <laughs> there was an a, a third a third party company that made Asteroids covers uh, for like to reskin the controller. It wasn't even anything made by Atari. It was just this weird company, and they gave you a decal right. to replicate what it would have looked like. They did one that was distressed, a version that looked like it had been, been through, through a, yeah, <laughs> through arcades and people <laughs> knocking and scratching on the side. And it just, I think it's well, well worth the money okay. Okay, for what you yep. get. Yeah. So for me, we had this discussion when I bought my first Replicate, and I don't know if you remember this. Hmm. I had a different opinion on the price point. Mm -hmm. So originally the price points were 129. You could get them for 119 if you bought them on that pre-sale that pre-order, right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if you remember, but I said they're twenty dollars too high. If this was ninety nine dollars, mm -hmm. it'd be insta buy. <laughs> it's an insta buy for thousands and thousands more people. See, but I think they'd make it less yeah. painful. But when it got there, but well, I mean, and that's what I'm saying. I think what has changed my mind a little bit since then is that they're not trying to sell these to the mass market. These mm. are very limited runs. Now we've we're gonna talk Which about it's a that, whole other topic, right? That, you know, <laughs> stuff about how they say, okay, we've sold all these pre-sales and then we come out and we sell them for two more weeks once they get here and that's everything and we're out of them. Yeah, and then six months later, oh, we found 500 in the corner Ooh, of the look, warehouse. A spare pallet. <laughs> mm, sure. Yeah, you did. Okay. Whatever. But now that I understand that they're trying to produce these things as rare collectibles that are also super well-designed and mm -hmm. playable, 
I'm okay with that extra money. Now they've increased that price to a point that's almost a little too painful now for because the so you're happy with it, that, and then like they bumped it by twenty on they you. Like, well, now it's twenty too high again. <laughs> and it's the old joke that we always say: it's just one more dollar. Just one yeah, more. Just yeah. one more. So if you'd buy it for this, you'd buy it for one more dollar, right? <laughs> Yeah. So we've got these. Now, Mo, you asked the question about what scale. These are one six scale yep. for the new wave. The numbskulls are called quarter cabinets because they are one quarter scale, mm-hmm. like the Galaga that's mm-hmm. down there on the end. So those, oddly enough, aren't that much more no. than the new waves. The Galagas and other quarter scale like it are anywhere from 149 to 189. Mm-hmm. Now, Not bad. I've got the Dragon's Lair down there, which is my second all-time favorite game, and Galaga right next to it, which is my all-time favorite game. It's not because which one is my favorite. I will say that the Galaga is much easier to play and makes me happier to look at. Hmm. Understandable. Do you have, how did, did you get a lot of disagreement with Jack to do this game? They do indeed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You talked to me about, you know, everybody was part of his board. Yeah, yeah, no, so right. they're not doing that. They, they're yeah. actually paying license <laughs> fees. Yeah. And that's another reason why, because honestly, the manufacturing of these cabinets, I know a lot of the parts that go into there, and there's about, at scale, $35 worth of work and Probably. parts mm-hmm. in those cabinets. They're selling them for 150 to 190 because they also have to recoup mm-hmm. that licensing fee, mm-hmm. and every good retailer out there is going to look at their costs and double it, and that's the retail mm-hmm. price. Yeah. We have a question right here. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Kind of going back on licensing. Um, so, are there any game companies like Namco or Taito or Nintendo that are making them that make their directly? Cabinets? No, not no, currently. No. If anybody does it, it's going to be Nintendo because yeah. Yeah. it used to be Nintendo. If, if you showed up with a handshake and a 50 cent piece, they would license out their PIPs <laughs> right. to you. And then they figured out, like, wow, our back catalog is worth a lot. We can resell it in the, the Wii shop, and we sell it in the Switch shop, and resell it next year in the net, whatever the next thing is shop. So they're the odd man out that's very obvious that none of these have any Nintendo time. There's no, no. Donkey Kong, there's no, right. uh, so there's no Mario. But, yeah. but right. oddly <laughs> enough, they'll license their NES cartridge ROMs to these other companies. Yeah. I don't think it holds much value for those persons. No, think they feel as I don't think valuable. they do. Yeah. But if it's a arcade Nintendo, no, no Nintendo product. NES cartridges, not even on these, not even. Yeah, there, there, there are no the NES these. ROMs are on these though. The NES are ROMs are right. They're Nintendo Entertainment System ROMs, right. but Nintendo doesn't own that. The company that manufactured those has those. Oh. There are no first party Nintendo NES ROMs on gotcha. these. Yes, okay. Namco's NES. Yes, of course. I got gotcha. you because Namco, you. Namco owns that right. Mm-hmm. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. They have the cheap mode in the Galaxy. Uh, no. <laughs> no it's, well, only because they didn't use that ROM. They didn't use that yeah. revision It's ROM. a particular version of the ROM, and it, but if it had been, it would have. Yeah. yeah. So what he's talking about, for anybody who doesn't know, <laughs> there's a cheat code in revision 1A. If you do not kill the bees on the two left bees, uh, top bottom on level one, yep. you just let them keep running their shots would fill up this counter that the original programmer had put in. And once that counter (laughs) had hit a certain number, had reached its limit, then they would stop firing. If you then killed them any time after that, no enemies would ever shoot at you for the rest of the game. Bullet free the rest of the game. Yeah. Yeah. And that's only on that ROM. They, we, they fixed that in revision, though. We put yeah. a video out on yeah, that, yeah, I think, did. didn't we? Yeah. I don't know. Um, that Galaga. We did, no, did we? we didn't. No. no okay. Awesome. About it. So we I know we've about it. done it millions of times. We talked yeah. about it in the podcast. Yeah. When oh, that's what it was. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. There's a question over there. Do you think the reason that the sport arcades are not much more than the 1-6 size is because they're on the shelf because people know that really? Nobody's playing those. They're just there to get put on the counter. I'll, I'll tell you why. Because I agree with him, right? You're stupid to play on one of the ones on the left hand side when this is available. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dumb thing to have. No, I like it. Hey. <laughs> So, so, he says right to the, here. so he says to the guys that have dozens of them. <laughs> so you're saying that the replicate and quarter skull, those are not worth having. You're saying only the, when that's available the for playing, for playing, are the, uh, for playing, like for just straight gotcha. playing. Yeah. So I do have one because there's a game I like. Mm-hmm. Right. So I do have that. But outside of that, what I really would like to have is the Hubert machine with a decent speaker in it that just plays the music. The sound, the background sound. Just the attract mode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
there's probably a YouTube channel and speaker on your PC to satisfy. <laughs> <laughs> For that to go on the shelf is a big deal because it looks good. So yes. I'll tell you this. I have, I don't know, maybe six different versions of either Replicade and Numskull. Mm -hmm. When I put those on a table or a shelf and I turn them all on, I feel like I'm 12 years old again. And I'll play them too. I'll, I'll especially play the Galaga one right. because, like I said, it being the quarter scale versus the six scale, it's very comfortable. Now, I have played the Dragon's Lair six scale to completion. I finished the game on that yeah. one just because it was a challenge That's to do thing. it. That noise is the perfume that makes yeah. me want to go get a kiss. Yeah. I mean, that, it, it's not just the noise that goes, ah, the noise, and I'm done. It's the foreplay to go, now I want to get in there. I want to play that game, and I want to <laughs> enjoy it because it, it's got my senses going. You know but you'd mean? ask the question in the context of, you know, is this why they're just a little bit more? I'll tell you why the quarter-cade from Numbskulls are just slightly higher. Number one, they're a bigger machine, so they know they can ask for a higher price point. But number two... They do sell those to the mass market. They are not limited runs, and they sell them through other retailers, not through their own website. If you go to the Numbskull website, they don't sell you anything. They redirect you mm -hmm. to just Geek GameStop in the US or whoever, or GameStop yeah, or right, yeah. somebody in England. They ask you, what country are you in? That's the first thing they ask you, and then they redirect you to somebody who will give you the cheapest possible shipping method mm -hmm. in your mm -hmm. area. So I think that the reason why they've kept those under 200 is simply because they're selling them to a larger audience. It's also why mm. they make the more popular models and not the Dragon's Layers. That doesn't answer the question about why people would pay it. <laughs> oh, you want to know why people would pay it? Because we love Galaga. Sorry. No. <laughs> but but you price things at a price. It seems to me that the price for the large... And it is, but it's not appreciably it's not larger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not that big jump. Well, yeah. I know we're getting close to the time, so I want to run through a couple other ones. We we talked about the Numbskull Quartercade. The Arcade 1-Up. So they have three different styles at that least. people buy. <laughs> yeah. least, right? yeah. The main ones are the Countercades, this size right here. These run anywhere from $89 to $199, depending upon where you buy it, for the exact same machine. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. you can often find these on QVC for half price all mm -hmm. day long. Right. So, if you see one at regular manufacturer retail price at one ninety nine, don't buy it. Yeah. Wait for QVC; it'll be free shipping. They'll have your version out there. I've got this Galaga. I've also got the Galaga eighty eight model, which oddly enough has the exact same games between the two, <laughs> yeah. but they're just different form factors. They have different stickers on them. Then you've got the Party Cade, which is down here on the end in the chair. Mm -hmm. Those range anywhere from $99 to $250. Again, mm -hmm. depending upon yeah. where you can find them and what price. Now, Mo, I know you got the next one, which is the, the three-quarter three scale. scale. Yep, you got it from Kohl's. Kohl's of all places. Right. Because <laughs> I love Tempest. Asteroids was on it. I was like, oh. Then it was like, yeah. it was super well, It was like an Atari. He called it the Atari Legacy. The Atari a Legacy. lot of great Atari games. Yeah, and it yeah. had the spinner. So it had a spinner and a trackball and right. all that stuff. And that one I got for play, you know, playing the games. But the thing was that of all places, I got a thing saying Coles had it. And if you bought it for normal retail, you got the riser, mm -hmm. and they shipped mm -hmm. it free. Now, normal That's retail so. on the three quarters can be anywhere from three hundred dollars to seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Just depends on yeah. the machine itself and the games that are licensed on. Right. Mm -hmm. Some of them are four player varieties, so right. much larger. Yeah. 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 Now that's all arcade one up, which arcade one up I would argue is probably the most well known name probably. in the space. I, they're the biggest player, the most mainstream, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But I do want to bring up one last one. Yep. And this is one that John, you and I were talking about it before the panel. It's mm -hmm. called II Arcade. So you guys have seen the multicades that are over in the in the arcade room mm -hmm. in front, you know, in front of the pinballs, and those things range like six thousand dollars down to twenty five hundred, depending upon which one you're buying. And they're beautiful machines. I'm not yeah, yeah. taking anything away from those guys who build those. The II arcade are a more mass market version of that, mm -hmm. and believe it or not, you can pick them up. Um, their original editions for six hundred dollars, all the way down to their new gold editions that have come out in the last year for a thousand dollars. Now, the difference that they have over every other thing that we've talked about is they also have a marketplace. Your machine, mm -hmm. when you get it home, you connect it to your internet, Wi-Fi or cable, whichever you do. You, you go on their marketplace. 
and they have a plethora of licensed arcade ROMs that you can download for anywhere from $5 to $25, depending upon the game. Without any of that hacking that you were suggesting, like, can I make it do more? That's kind of their niche that they've had, this angle, is that it is, is expandable. You can do more with it. Right. Yeah. Um, so. so, and then, John, you've got one here, Replica Full Size. Well, that's my I put yeah. it yeah. yeah. So that was the one, because remember I said that I bought this one because I wanted the real play? Mm -hmm. Right. This got kind of ruined for me because... <laughs> oh, I know what you're going. Yeah. yeah. I have a full-size replica. Like, full-size, exact replica of Qbert. Well, we didn't know until maybe three months ago that that was a thing. Yeah, right? that was a thing. Yeah. There's companies that just make full-size replica cabinets that exactly mimic it. Not something I would have bought myself. Right. So you just really have to get a girlfriend who really likes you. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> imagine, imagine this at six times the size. I mean, it's again, they replicate every little part. Yeah. The T-molding, the side art, the, the bezel, the, the, all the, that the stuff. The marquee, everything. Yeah. And I mean, and that one, though, I mean, I say, I mean, as awesome as all these are, I mean, I don't think anything will yeah, ever but, replace that but actual. Right, right. Tell them the price. Oh, I, I, it's really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, I'm trying to be nice to look exact Tell exact the, price, but they go from probably two to three and a half thousand dollars. Yeah, and how range. many games are on that? Oh, but it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> It has Cubert on it. It's Cubert, and it's perfect. <laughs> right. The control is exactly like that, That's all Mo really needs. It's okay. I, I, I get with it. that. No, I mean, exa and it's one of those things, I, you look at it, I smile. You know, I mean, it, it makes me happy. It's so. the guy who buys the car that he always wanted when he was a kid, right? Yeah. If you I, yeah. wanted a Cubert mm -hmm. arcade cabinet yeah. in your home when you were young. You have one now. It costs you, but... Well, well kind of. Well, it costs someone. <laughs> <laughs> no, Take that, tough. Ricky Schroeder. And <laughs> silver spoons, punk. <laughs> All right. So we talked about what you could buy them for when they were for yeah. sale. Some of these are no longer for sale, as we talked about. But what about the secondary market, eBay? All right. New Wave Toys replicates on eBay, and I've looked these up. These are actually sold prices, depending upon the machine, 119 which is what they yeah. were originally. Yeah, so you make your money back. Mm -hmm. To $500. And not, not that long these came out. Mm -hmm. No, and the $500 one is that one right down there. Good. <laughs> there were seven of those Jeez. Dragon Slayers sold from anywhere from 450 to oh, 525 yeah. in the last the week wave. on eBay. Yeah. When I looked up these prices they, uh, before it came most out. Most putting it in his bag. <laughs> no, Mo was not putting that in his bag. <laughs> then you've got the Numskull, the quarter cades. Mm -hmm. So sold models... As low as sixty dollars because they're mass them. market things. Because they're mass they're market, not so rare. They're easy to find, but no. a couple of them, three hundred dollars because Pro probably out of print. They're ones That's that the are deal. rare and harder yeah. to find. Yeah, mm -hmm. John, you looked up my arcade and basic fun. Yeah, and I alluded earlier that it has as, will, as this will meet out is that. The more accurate the game, the more attention to detail to the original cabinet it is. The more it holds or improves on its value, and the reality is. These pristine, unopened in the box, still go for about what you paid for them. 20 to 25, 30 bucks tops. Mm -hmm. And plus you're going to pay shipping and tax and all that on top of that. Was, these are things that used to be 1995. And we're talking some of these that came out now four or five years ago and been out of print for three years at least. No great improvement on value. And that's true both of the My Arcades and of the the, uh, the basic funds, the Walmart ones. They stayed about the same. I even looked at these little tiny ones, the tiny arcades. Right, yeah. And they're all same as you buy. You talked about Cracker Bro. You could pick it up for 10 15 20 bucks. The most expensive one's probably 25 or 30 really, realistically. The only one that's worth anything is there's a single one of these that oh, yeah. happens to have Ms. – it's like the 43 Union, it's right? It's the only Galaga machine out there on the floor it, right now. It has Galaga and Ms. Pac-Man together. It's 100 bucks because they only were in Cracker Barrel, and there's only a few of yeah. them, and if you find one, grab it. But otherwise, that's just super rare. Those didn't really hold or increase no. in value at all. So I think – with our research that we've done extensively <laughs> on this subject, yeah. what we're finding, if you want to collect these for yourself, and we're going to get into collectability in just a moment, if you're looking to buy them and you don't want to get overcharged <laughs> or overpriced, you can pick up pretty much anything that we've talked about except no for the New Wave Toys replicates. Yeah, right. And I think the you reason for that in. is because of how they do their limited manufacturing mm -hmm. runs, and then they hold back supplies and release them later. They have designed exclusivity baked into yes, the release do. format. Yeah. So recently, the Dragon Slayer machine came under a little bit of controversy because that machine, just like your Galaga on your Arcade 1-Up, mm -hmm. it doesn't quite have the power 
to run the ROM, which is odd. Yeah, you know, we're talking about a 40 game, well, 40 it's, year it's old like game. video clips ultimately, right? right in a yeah. ROM, yeah. Um, so they are re releasing Dragon's Lair right? with a higher chipset, and then they are releasing a new version, kind of like Mo, you got your two yep. versions of Qbert. They're releasing the red band version of Dragon's oh, yeah. Lair. So the T molding, they're releasing one that has the red T molding on uh, it. How much is that going to go for? They did the same thing. They were one forty nine with the twenty dollars off. So I think I got them for like one thirty nine, one twenty nine, something like that. When I bought them on the um, upfront price mm-hmm. before right. yep. they get manufactured, but because of the expectation of how much that that particular Dragon's Lair is, I bought four, <laughs> <laughs> and I did it for a specific reason. He smells blood want in the, the water. Dragon's Lair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I really only care about getting that red tea molded one because I already have the yeah. black tea molded, so and I'm very happy one. with that one. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I bought four because I wanted the one, and I'm going to take the other three and resell them on eBay to make up the amount of money that I spent on the two <laughs> so that they're free to me. And I think that's something that you can only do right now mm-hmm. with New Wave Toys replicate units. Yeah, yeah. because of how they, they appreciate and cost so quickly. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, you can't really do that on many of the numbskulls. The one um, tiny arcade yeah, that you talked about, yep. yeah, you're going to pay that price for it now. But if you had one for back in the day, you're good. Yep. If you had two, you're better. <laughs> well, uh, you're buying extras and extras that you're going to hold in the closet. But if you're buying them to display and collect, space is a consideration. Well, let's. So here's the question for yeah. this mm-hmm. for this whole section here that we're going to finish up okay. on. Should I really be collecting these? <laughs> <laughs> Coming up. On 5-Minute News, I'm Anthony Davis. You might think it's partisan because maybe it's critical of one side or the other, but it's not, it's just the truth. And I think that's also something that's kind of unusual for Americans listening to the radio or to podcasts because the news landscape in the States has been so partisan for so many decades. So 5-Minute News is verified, truthful, independent, unbiased, and essential world news daily. If you're a die-hard Gen X grown-up, you can pledge your support by clicking join on YouTube or by becoming a patron at genxgrownup.com slash Patreon. Should I really be collecting these days? <laughs> And I think that's a, it's a funny question, but it's an important question because there are a lot of concerns you were just bringing up. Yeah, space. space. Where, I, where I put them? Yeah, I have a place for that. Yeah, we've established that they're not a fantastic collectible. They have not pre- yet proven themselves to be a fantastic investment collectible. Right. I'll say that. They're a great collectible. I love them or we wouldn't have piles and piles of them. And they may be like the Coleco in the future. Yeah. You might find out that, well, hey, now it's 30 some odd years later, they will have a great amount of value. We're only a few years removed, though. Well, here's a question also I have about the collectability is the market, right? I mean, they're marketing to us. Mm-hmm. And we have a shelf life. <laughs> yeah, and it's coming to an yeah, end. Right. I mean, <laughs> at some point, will our kids want to pay for this, or will the next generation people want to pay this much for this kind That's of? That's a good point. You know, yeah. it depends on how good we were as parents. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lean in for retro, but I often don't know whether or not that focus on retro in like the content creator community is because they love retro, or is it because they just love that thing that's just before their generation? Hmm. And the Gen X stuff is not just before the next generation. It's, you know, it's we are, a yeah, I mean, now. we're, you know, I've seen those things where, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, lack of ownership. They're like, we're closer to this date than we are to, you know, World War II. And you're like, really? Wow, well, you've seen those things that make you feel old on Facebook. Can I interject before you go? One thing. I go about pinball game, pinball arcade options. Ten years ago, you buy the game, dedicated cam- cabinet, everything, you know, not 61 games, just original. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Galaga, Donkey Kong, mm-hmm. and all this game. I think you go one in September. Though so you probably paid maybe three to four hundred dollars for the game. Right. Mm-hmm. Not today. No. no. The triple that. $2, yeah. 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 $2,000. If you get a bidding war, you can go up high. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I, sure. My wife is here tonight, and her and I were walking through the arcade before we came to the panel, and I saw the Dragon's Lair and Space Ace that are over there. Now, yeah. those are. Games that you don't find in really nice working condition very often. Now, the Dragon's Lair cabinet is beat to hell on the bottom of it, but if it had a sticker on it... <laughs> you might make an offer. You know? I might yeah. be asking the wife where we can go rent a U-Haul truck. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or wait till she leaves and then go... I would have to wait till she leaves, that's true. <laughs> 
No, no, no. None. no. If, ever, if ever there is one, a Nintendo is going to manufacture it. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. he will buy it. No. And that's the thing we were talking about, Nintendo not getting into the market yet, and they won't allow anybody else to do yep. their yeah. stuff. Yep. The space concern I want to go back to a little bit because okay. space yeah. is different depending upon the different thing that you're collecting. If you're collecting those world's smallest, <laughs> oh, those look great on an office desk. Just book my <laughs> my employees come yeah. to my desk all the time at work and they just sit there and turn them on and watch them and try to play them a little bit and stuff. And it's a fun little office tool. I think there's no space concern with something like no. that. No. But when you start getting into the three-quarter scale arcade one-ups oh, or yeah. your yeah. replica... Yep, Huber yeah, cabinet. Yeah. No, frankly, anything better than anything bigger than those is starts to become a big concern. Yeah. Even, yeah. even these little counter cases. Oh, I've yeah. got two of them, and I'm kind of like, do I really still need two of them? Mm-hmm. They play the same games. I like the look of this one better than the other yeah. one. Maybe I just bought the other one because it was on sale on QVC. It was and cheap. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, maybe. <laughs> that's how they get you. Yep. Yeah, that's how they got me. <laughs> so space, though, I oh, think sure. is, yeah. is a legitimate concern because mm-hmm. – my children have left the house, so I've got extra rooms now, but... <laughs> they're rapidly filling. <laughs> they're full, yeah. So, I don't know. What do you guys think about the space part of it? Oh, it is. Like you said, I mean, I have the Cuber cabinet. I don't ever plan to have another one. Mm-hmm. You know, but, you know, I'm willing to give it the space for that You've one. You've maxed but, out Cuber, right? Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. I mean, yeah. I mean, but, yeah, I don't see the need to gain another one. But, yeah, like these, even these guys are hard to get too many of these this size and find a place to store them. They take up space. You, you know? never know how many they're going to make. That's the thing. Yeah. They always yeah. leave that little image yeah. on their catalog. Little silhouette. Blank. And you wonder, yeah. what's yeah. it going like, to be? What's that going to be? Yeah. And you try to look at the design of it. They've actually filled that out now. Everything they, they had silhouettes really? for, they've done. And who knows what the next wave is. Oh, yeah. wow. Interesting. So, John, you and I both, you mm-hmm. have yours still. I've sent mine over to my son's house. Yeah. Uh, we built MAME arcade cabinets. Oh, yes. Yeah, sure. It's something that, it's kind of off topic a little bit, but it's a space concern thing. It's... Yeah. A multi cade environment. I don't know how many games we had on that thing. 20,000, 30,000, oh, uh, yeah, some yeah, crazy number. But yours takes up a lot of space in your living room. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, mine is a conversion of a genuine arcade cabinet. Right. So it's not a slim line thing. No, it's, same as mine. It's, it's three and a half foot deep or something. It's it, it's a monster. Uh, and it has a you know the big control deck that juts right. out for a minute. It's, yeah, the, the benefit to is you could argue, well, yeah, it takes up, you know, like eight square foot of real estate on the floor, but. I don't need another one. No. You know, I don't need to go buy the next one that comes out, the next one comes out. For many things, it's the closest I need, unless I could get, you know, like you got your cube, unless I could get a nice, would real you, full size. Would you ever go. replace it with a pretty mass market II arcade? I don't think I would. I don't okay. think I, I, there's something about that, the mass market appeal of it that. Uh, I would end up having to mod it to get it back to what I wanted it to feel like, really. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think if that's what you're looking for is the playability, the experience, and the tactile simple. kind of like muscle memory of standing there, like leaning you don't on have it. To, yeah. You don't have to be a soldering expert to put an IR arcade in your house. Of course not. No, yeah. no, no. Yep. What about yep. Uh, collectability? We talked a little bit about the prices and everything. Is the collectability something that drives you to grab them? John, you at one point had a shelf full of mm-hmm. basic fun. Yeah, I oh, still do. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, they're, they're infinitely collectible. If you're a completionist, they put numbers on the side <laughs> just, just to be jerks. So if you're missing a number, you're like, well, I don't have the 13. I have the 12 and the 14, right? And, and, and that's, that's, that's one of the, another thing that makes me go, oh, man, I need the number 12. You know, it's – so, I mean, they make them to be very collectible, especially at the low end. I don't yeah. think they're making – Replicates and, and the, mm-hmm. well, maybe replicates, but they're not making them to be. I got to have every single one right. of them. Some people do. These things are designed to go. Oh, go ahead and get them all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mo, talk a little bit about the duplication of games. We talked about yeah. that with Arcade One Up and everything. Does that detract you from buying different styles of the cabinets that might have shared games between them? I mean, yeah, it does. I mean, especially at this point, I think I've. Pretty much hit my maximum <laughs> volume. Your capacity, as these, yeah. capacity for a lot yeah. of these things, unless something super, super amazingly special thing came out, you know. Right. But right now, like I said I'm happy with the ones I have, you know. And I said I didn't really buy them as collecting them as far as like right. resale or anything mm-hmm. else. I they're on my shelf on my. If anything, you know, it's office. a happy accident later, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. What about you, John? Yeah, I mean that's uh, Mo, Mo really said it. I didn't buy them to collect. I really bought them to cover as content. Uh, which I did, and then once I got into that, you know, it wasn't strictly for that. I love them and like them, especially the smaller ones. They're very collectible. If you have enough money, the bigger ones are fun to collect, but they take up the space. Yeah. That's the, that's the yin the yang of it. Okay. Yeah. 
So a little kind of off topic here, but I'm just wondering kind of how like the ports to consoles or mobile, something like a Namco Museum might fit. Mm -hmm. So they they have them. Mm -hmm. I don't consider those types of things in the class of devices yeah, we're talking yeah. about here because those are built to satisfy a different itch. Uh, this is specifically about getting something that looks like what mm -hmm. you remember or feels or sounds like what yeah. you remember. And those, I think, are very mass market and slapped together with whatever licenses they could get. Mm. And if you look at those things, they say 100 games here or 200 games there, and like 50 of the games are something you've never seen or heard <laughs> of that's a piece of crap. Well, and you know too, George, I mean, this is a great segue into what you know, kind of we wrap this up. You know, we're yeah. talking about those are great fun. I have many of those collections, but they're yeah. digital only. They're mm. software only. There's no tactile component to that. And the arcade experience, for those of us that live during it, there's more to that game than the software that runs on that machine. Mm -hmm. There's more to it. There is the feel. There is the sound. There's the environment. There's the Leonard Skinner on the speaker. There's the, <laughs> you know, the sticky floor. There's all that is part of that experience. And every little piece of it that gets better gets you closer sure. to that experience. It's and nostalgia for sure. Yeah. And so for playing the software is great. We have it with emulation. You could do it with a keyboard. You don't even need anything special. Just go grab it and download it. These things, we're not fooling ourselves. You know, even your Qbert that is yeah. full size is not 100% the arcade experience. <laughs> well, you said it's an LCD. Well, that made good sense. It doesn't have a knocker at the end. Okay, well, it just wasn't part of the budget. But even it's not sitting in the arcade. Right. We know when we buy these things mm -hmm. that we're not replicating the arcade experience. Whatever the name of the rec replicate may be, we're not right. replicating that. But ultimately, it's something that we can hold in our hand to get us closer to that thing that we loved. It's a representative the of, of the thing. Yeah. It's it's just this little totem that I can have in my hand, I can throw in my pocket, or I can have on the shelf that I can walk up and remind me of the thing I loved, and in many cases reproduce large chunks of it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But we know that ultimately we want to come to Atlanta later when the arcade machines are here and we're in this noisy <laughs> warehouse and it's like that arcade that you add much, much more closely. That gets you another, you know, 5% closer yeah. to that experience. Yeah, I'd say Totem of Our Youth is a good mm -hmm. they way to, every one of them. to mm -hmm. describe the entire market. Even the crappy ones. Are totem. Even the, yeah, I mean, because that's what yeah. they are. I mean, you pick up that little Tetris right over mm -hmm. there. It feel you know you, you just get that feeling. Yeah. This, I, oh, I remember dun, dun, that time dun, dun, when dun, I walked dun, in that dun, arcade yeah. and I played Tetris, or I remember the first time I played Galaga and somebody told me about the cheat. You know, mm -hmm, for, right? to yeah. have the bullets disabled. Yeah. I think you know this totem of our youth speech you've given before when yeah. we've done a similar right. panel, and I think it really hits home to why people of our generation and our ages, and even younger, uh, you know, the people that we have shown these things to, our children come to these conventions, come to these panels, mm -hmm. and want to sit down and listen to three windbags talk about it for an hour, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe go learn where they can go buy something, yeah. or maybe find a new YouTube channel, hint, hint, that they might want to subscribe to <laughs> and enjoy the content of. I think Totem of Our Youth is so important to us at this stage of our lives. Yeah. It's, it's, it's my midlife crisis, and... I'm happy to be a part of it. You're, you're a little past midlife, though, probably. Okay, shut Just up. Saying. Just okay, saying. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> Wait, Just what because am I then? I'm going to die. <laughs> you're, you're well past that. <laughs> Just because I have every ailment known to man. Is there any maintenance to these? No. Dust them every once in a while, change the batteries, change batteries. Yeah. or charge them. Recharge them, yeah. 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 No, no, no. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah. I worked in an arcade. <laughs> I've seen that happen. That's not even a joking matter. Yeah. That kills yeah. people. <laughs> That's a dangerous thing. Thank God. Yeah, yep. even if they're turned off, you got to put that screwdriver underneath there and pop that thing. No, sure. these are no maintenance whatsoever. It's pick it up, take it out of the box, start looking at it or playing it, whatever you want to yeah. do. So. To George's point, we I know we're well over time. We appreciate you guys infinitely Absolutely. for being here, hanging out. We have some cards up here if you'd like to pick out. We have both a YouTube channel where we put out regular weekly content as well as an audio podcast, if that's your jam, uh, where it's basically, this is what we do. This is, <laughs> this is a live version of our podcast where we either talk about current stuff or we dig into nostalgic stuff from our Gen X youth. Yeah, that's we talked about all of these on our channel at some point. At one point, we've mentioned... <laughs> At one point, yeah. yeah. Got nothing else to do. Yep. 
<laughs> well. <laughs> so, final word, George? Uh, Take us home. I think, honestly, just thank you guys for coming. I know it's Friday night. It's first night of the convention, and so that's a little bit slower time. I really appreciate you guys turning out yeah, and sitting with us for an hour. I think, for me, one of my favorite things about this convention, and this is the reason why we love SFGE so much. We used to do a table every time, but we were talking about it. We don't get to enjoy the convention itself. We don't mm-hmm. get to talk with you guys yeah. and play games with you guys and sit down at the board game area. Now we get to do yeah. that because yeah. we're just doing the panels. So yeah. I'm sorry that we're not doing the tables, but uh-huh. I'm much happier yeah. just, just doing this. Hunt us down. We're very obvious. You're hunt us yeah. down. We're out there. So. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys <laughs> very much, you much for showing yeah. up. We appreciate you. If you have you. any questions, come forward. We'll be yeah. happy to answer well, Gen X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. Unacceptable for grown-ups. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown-up. Of course. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. 66% of us are photogenic. All right. That's enough. What? I didn't say it was you. Yeah, okay. (laughs) We all know you Mo's the sexy one and you're the pretty I one. I did know so. it was, yeah. It could have been anyone. It could have been any of the ugly ones of us. Mother pus <laughs> Why didn't you say it was you? <laughs> all right. Yeah. We're 7 no, o'clock. No, it's not there at all, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> hey there. Are you interested in building your brand, whether it's personal, startup, or corporate, and developing your leadership skills? On Minter Dialogue, come join me, Minter Dialogue as I interview some of the world's most interesting personalities, entrepreneurs, business people, and authors. I'm proud that this podcast, which is available through all your favorite podcast services, is part of the Evergreen Podcast Network. Check out the Minter Dialogue show on leadership, transformation, and brand strategy, where you'll get stimulating conversations that elevate your energy and spark change.